Okay, so I'm going to call tonight's uh, meeting of the East Long Meadow Board of Health to order. Um, the Board of Health is recording. Is anyone else recording? Okay, and we are meeting virtually tonight via Zoom. Um, based on, I've stopped printing this stuff out, um, pursuant to the uh, Governor Baker's March uh, 2020 order suspending certain meeting, certain provisions of the open meeting law, which has been uh, extended now. Um, and so we'll continue to meet virtually as long as we can. Um, so the first thing on the agenda this evening is approving the minutes um, from the last meeting. Uh, that meeting was, oh, I don't want the print the minutes. Um, August I'm super organized and then I like, where did I put my stuff? Um, I think so it was August 30th. August 30th. Thank you so much. Um, so approval of the minutes um, from the meeting, August 30th. Does anyone have any changes or edits to those minutes? Okay. Um, can we have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I motion to approve the minutes as written, please. All right, I can second that. Um, so a roll call vote, Christine Johnston, aye. Dr. Katie Jobbins. Aye. And Rebecca Torsha. Aye. Great. Um, do we have anybody here for public comment? No, we do not. Okay. All right, so we're moving on. Um, first thing on the business at hand is the um, discussion of the tobacco sales regulation, um, which we talked about at the last meeting and then saw a updated copy of um, for this meeting. Um, I know, so uh, uh, last week at the um, MHOA tobacco conference, Cheryl had said something about October is their state is going to be updating the regulations. What did she say anything exactly, um, Alex, as to what we won't be looking at? Yeah, she said that they're going to be updating mostly the statement of purpose. So a lot of the citations that they use are kind of old and outdated. So they're just going to go through and kind of edit those. She said that there's nothing major changing on it, but she did say maybe she suggested holding off until they do come out with those, which she expects that they'll be out in October. So we can wait till those are out. And so we just have the absolute most updated current regulations that match states. That's what she suggested. Yeah, and then we can that if we were to do this now, edit it, and then have to edit it again based off of those new things. And it's, I mean, October is two weeks away. Right, yeah. So since it's so soon, we might as well just wait till they publish those and then they'll match. The statement of purpose is just there you know, because they're allowed to make any regulations based on, you know, that that's reasonable. So that's their rationale for the tobacco regulations and the law that they have. Would it be worth taking a look at any of those points that we wanted to discuss so that when that rolls out, we can just like, yeah. 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 I think there were two questions, two things that I, noted one was the rolling or the rolling papers are only the flavored wraps i think was something we still had to make a decision on which is on page seven in the green up until page seven all of my notes where they change things just say like check 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 does anybody have anything before that point okay um so that's one thing that we would have to um discuss anything in green i think was the stuff that was a recommendation as opposed to like what we have to put in. Anything that's green is a board of health decision. Anything that is yellow is in the is state law. Okay. That's the difference between those two. So we can either talk about the green stuff tonight or we can push it forward if any major changes. So I'm looking on my phone and I can't see the yellow and the green anymore. Oh so no. It literally all just went like neutral. Um, so what is, what's the first agreement? Cause just tell me what section that's in, sorry. Sure, it's um, page seven, um, it's the rolling papers. So what is the alphabet next to it? Like, is it e? F, E? I think. Okay. I don't have the alphabet next to it. I think it's still in C. Okay. 
the number oh wait you see but the number below it is e so, are we looking at what cheryl c. said oh, no it is c it's c it's c i'm sorry i'm doing yeah that. i was looking at what cheryl said i was looking at the one that tammy sent is that not the right one anymore that's the same one from a few weeks ago that cheryl sent i just okay, really yeah. sent that's it. my thought i just wanted to make sure because i had that i reviewed the one that she'd sent a while ago but then i didn't Okay, have it seen. Okay, so this is where so it's, it's on page seven under rolling papers. Okay, yeah. So I think obviously knowing, um, so that's what, so the, the state law no longer preempts local regulation, adding this definition will cover non tobacco, non nicotine wraps, such as hemp wraps, right? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have two choices that I, I read is that we have the option to include rolling papers or you can, we can choose to include only the flavored wraps, which would fall under a different um, definition, would be under the tobacco product flavor enhancer. And what is the state doing now with their, that's what I didn't understand when she sent it. So are they doing it for both flavored and non-flavored or are they just doing it for the flavored? So the state law would not allow for flavored rolling papers as a as a, to, as a flavor enhancer, that's what it would fall under. Having this rolling paper definition will just kind of button up not allowing um, fla other flavored book rolling papers like the hemp wraps and, and just make it more tight. I personally think we should stay as in line with the state as possible so it's less confusing. Mm -hmm. So I would vote with them the flavor or I would consider discussion about the flavor option not including everything. So not, include, not including everything or just or including do, everything. Doing what the state is doing. Including everything. That's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So the more restrictive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Rebecca? it'll just make things less, you know, like I said, it just tightens it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as simple as possible. Okay. Um, so obviously we're not voting on this, but can we put that into our final draft then that we would keep? <laughs> the um, rolling paper definition as written and not the, just the flavored wraps. Yep. All right. The next green things start with um, smoking bars, which is just, uh, just down over the page break from the rolling paper. So it's still in the definition section. The most of it is yellow. It's the last line. Um, that reads smoking bar shall include, but not be limited to those establishments that are commonly known as cigar bars, hookah bars, and vape bars. Those all seem like they are smoking bars to me. So I would, I, my uh, propensity would be to include those in the definition of smoking bars. I agree. We only have one, right? We don't have any smoking bars in East Meadow. Even if we, we have cigar bars? No, we, we don't have any cigar bars. No. Mm -mm. So those I, are I always you... understood that they were banned in East Long Meadow and our past regulations. Okay. Okay. Well, and actually expanding it to include all that would prevent any from coming in as well, too. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with that, too. Okay. Um, so the tobacco product flavor enhancer next definition down, we would not need then that, green, that last green line because that would be considered under the rolling paper thing that we just talked about. I think that they would just include it yeah. anyways. Yeah. I don't think we can do both. I think we have to do one or the other. Uh, we might want to, we can. I, I don't think so. I think it just clarifies that we've established that the um, that a rolling paper that's flavored is considered a flavor enhancer. And now it's in the, now it's in the, because a flavor enhancer could be drops. It could be yeah. lots of different things. So now we're just saying that a flavor enhancer, it's like a turtle and a tortoise, like it yeah. could be, but not okay. one. Yeah. So essentially we just need to include that paragraph then. Okay. Yep. Um, required under required signage, which is under D2, 
insert one, it just adds smoking bars into things that require signage. Since we don't have any, it, it would be easy to just add and it would stay consistent with all the retail establishments. That's again, what they're suggesting. Yep. Okay. Um, what else is green? The next one I have is under E, tobacco product sales permit number four, which is on my page 10, says all required Mass Department of Reven Revenue licenses related to the sale of tobacco products as defined herein must also be displayed conspicuously at the retail establishment. Again, I have an issue with that. Um, and then number eight, on the sign in the same section, a tobacco product sales permit will not be renewed if the permit holder has sold a tobacco product to a person under the age of 21 three times within the previous permit year and the time period to appeal has expired and they may request a hearing in accordance. I'm seeing nods. I think that seems appropriate. I wouldn't I think we can add it in as you wrote it. Okay for our final review and vote. Yeah. Under nine, there's nothing green, but um, Shell had put in 18 establishments. Right now we have 15. Since the pride, that the other the pride at the center closed. So I don't know if you wanna keep it at 15. So if we lift it at 18th and three more establishments could be added to the city, is that, and we're regulated for how many currently? 18. Okay. And before that pride closed, how many did we, were we at 16? Like how long had we been at 16? Do you know? We had been at 16 for probably, I'm trying to think because we had the Heritage Plaza liquor place open, which brought us up, but that was a transfer of a liquor of a tobacco license. So, so probably for a while so we were at 16. Ever since we used to have 18 before um, we had well we had seven yeah, and we had we had 18 when um, the Walgreens and Big Y sold tobacco, and since they were pharmacy, they gave up their tobacco permit. So that's why we've had this gap. So 16 since I've been on, so since 2018, before the pride closed. Katie, Rebecca, thoughts on changing that from 18? I'm fine with keeping it limited, keeping it at, at I, what is it, 15 right now? No, it's yeah. 18 right now. But you said the number we currently bringing have it down to fifteen. But there's, there were, right now that are wasn't it sixteen? You said there were sixteen. There, there's fifteen right now. Or fifteen, right? Yeah. Can we cap it at that, or suggest capping it at that? I think we I can know. do what we want. I think we're allowed to do that. Like if we're voting on this and there, it's not like we're taking someone's license away. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to, but I mean, just capping that and keeping that at where we're at right now. Do so we know the intention of that property? That was the pride? I don't know. I don't I haven't heard anything. think it's, I really don't think it's gonna be another gas station because they took away the pumps and they took out the oil tanks. I think that there was more of an idea to ex to expand some of those shops or tear that whole thing down. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, or you can keep it at, you can have it at 16 so that there, there is one. Well, that's that option for another one. Yeah, I think if we leave it at 16, then we have the option if someone does come and petition. Whereas if we have it at 15, we then have to go back and revote and change the whole charter for that part, right? So if we leave it at 16, then it allows for at least for one potential, like you said, there's that new property. Um, so we leave the one potential new, and then I would take it, I don't think we need 18, but I think 16 is fine. Leaving it at 16 would be good. 
especially if we haven't had those last two in in circulation for a while. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alex, for bringing that up. Um, next section is F. This is where it actually says prohibition of smoking bars. So it's in green. This would just straightforward prohibit smoking bars in East Long Meadow. And since we don't have any, again, we're not taking away someone's business like practice and their livelihood. I think that's appropriate. Okay, we can leave that in there. Uh, the rest of the stuff was just, was the dollar values. Again, that's just state recommendations. Um, I actually had a question on H, the first paragraph. I don't know if anybody has anything up until that point. Anybody else? Everybody's good with adding G, um, those, um, the two amounts, G1 and G2, the way they are. Christine, what was your question on H? So, so my question on H says, the recommendation is no person shall possess, hold, keep, and it already says sell, distribute, or cause to be possessed, held, kept, sold, or distributed. And I wanted to clarify, does that mean like possession of flavored tobacco products is against the regulation or just sale? Right, because yeah, there's a lot so, of things, like possession is a lower charge than sale, right? Like before cannabis was legal, possession was not the same as sale. Yeah. I, if the way that Cheryl talked about it was that it's it, it's like a business had flavored tobacco products on site and they claimed to sell them to Connecticut or online, which is kind of silly to do in Massachusetts because the excise tax is so high. So why would you ever do that unless you are intentionally selling flavored products to people that you either know or you know, it's, it's kind of silly for them to, to have those tobacco products just on site even, because what, what would you be doing with them? So that's why they have that wording in there. So it's not like if someone went to Connecticut, bought them, and then brought them into the state and they were their own person, they wouldn't get in trouble. It's more for the retailers. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's fine to keep it then as it is. Yeah, I agree. That was my sort of concern was like somebody who obtained something legally but then is against this, like Katie just said, like person in their own home. Oh yeah, no, it's, that's not what it's for. <laughs> okay, great. That's if we went, if we went to somewhere and in a room, they had a box of flavored cigars or something like that. What, why are you, why do you have those in your possession even though they're not on your shelves? Okay. Well, then I'm okay with keeping it as it's written then too. Um, next green piece is L4. It says no permit holder shall refill a cartridge that is pre-filled and sealed by the manufacturer and not intended to be opened by the consumer or retailer. Again, I'm assuming that's a retailer like opening a, yeah. I'm okay with that one as written too. Katie's nodding her head. <laughs> Um, and the last big piece on here looks like the, in the, uh, under S, S11 is the, um, license, the sale license. Um, we have to figure out how many days we want to rescind that license for. And I think Cheryl said the averages around us were one to three days. Yeah. So it can either be one, two or three days or it can say up to 30 days, but most people usually have it the three, seven and 30 days. Unless you wanna make it one, but that's kind of a lot of work to then, you know, you, you know, you have to go there and make sure that they remove all the product from the shelves just for one day. So we can say 30 days, 
12 days or seven days or three days? So it can be, you can have it be one, two or three days, okay. or it can say up to 30 days. So at the hearing, when they would come in for that violation, the board would then decide what they wanted to, you know, with like depending on the severity of the infraction. No, just for the first, just for the first one. Oh. So that's why most most boards of health pick between the one and three days because the second violation is seven and then the third is 30 days. I think three would be appropriate. It's like halfway. The seven. Yeah. And your explanation about, you know, you have to go in and make sure that they've removed everything, right? You, that you're yeah. right. That's a lot of work to, to check it and then check it again. Yeah. And then also when as part of the Pioneer Valley Tobacco Coalition for suspensions, we also go out to make sure that they don't, they're not selling products at that time. So that gives a little bit more of a window too for someone else to come out and just double check. Does anyone have anything else they want to discuss on those or anything else, Alex or Tammy, that we should be thinking about? Everyone good. So at least we'll hopefully have the new statement of purpose draft from the state for our next meeting. And then we can review that. And then I guess we'll push forward the vote probably until November. Does that sound like We have to have a public hearing and that has to be posted for 14 days. So for to pass the regulations. Okay. So that looks like a November. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Now, at least we got the hard work done because I think the reviewing the statement of purpose and any other changes will be pretty quick. Um, all right. Moving on. I, next item is waste hauling regulation discussion. So I sent to you the very slightly amended um, regulations. It, there's just, a, I thought there was supposed to be something about some new ter terminology besides for commercial customers, but I guess that's just it. The, the spot where it says for commercial customers aligns it with uh, what the state has. And then the new dates for the ban, um, the materials ban are reflected on the last page for mattresses, textiles, and organic wastes. Yeah, I think the, the other thing that had to be changed was um, their statement. This is that we have to say that we must recycle for the state. So that's that's another piece that was changed. Uh, yeah, I don't see where she put that though. I'll check on that before we, I figure if we are gonna do, uh, if we're gonna do post notice, we might as well post notice to make as much <laughs> bang for our buck. So we could do, um, waste hauler uh we could quickly approve um the title five uh changes that we talked about the last meeting we do tobacco just all over the board <laughs> we'll make sure that we're in um it doesn't it says recyclables must be under the recyclable section so maybe it's somewhere mm -hmm. else i don't see it real quickly when i just look through it I'll I'll look through it again and figure out where that was supposed to go to. The only other thing I highlighted on mine is under annual hauler permit renewal. It says permit fee of TBD. Do we need to put something in there, or is that that was another thing that we wanted to talk about? Uh, when I look back at the notes that Amy had, and from not that long ago, I think it was was it 2019 maybe. Um, she talked about there being two, two different sort of sets of prices. One was $500 and one was $250. And for some reason in the end, it was just uh, settled on $250, which 250 seems a lot for say somebody who just comes into town once, twice, or maybe three times for a whole year to maybe drop a roll off off and that's it. But 250 also doesn't seem a lot for larger companies like 
you know, Republic or Waste Management or Casella that pick up dumpsters at locations. So I think kind of um, maybe talking about making more of a fee schedule and not everything being exactly $250 seems more appropriate. But I think what we were having a hard time uh, parceling is sort of that what what to go by. Um, they do have to give us the you know their how their tonnage and everything like that. Their if you look on where is it? Um, um, oh, I had this pulled out. So every year they have to, they have to give, oh, it's in here. I have a lot of papers sitting on my lap. So every, every year they have to give us um, a solid waste and recycling report. Um, basically, what, you know, their customers, how many, how often they've gone, um, their tonnage, the facility and everything like that, what kind of waste. Uh, so it's, it might be, it's hard to say like, how are you going to, how, how are you going to uh, use that information to um, to capture people who've never paid for a permit before because they don't have that. So I think that's where we kind of had a little bit of a stopping in the conversation of it. So I think that like, so obviously for this year, September is the time in which uh, we renew. So coming up with a different fee schedule right now really wouldn't make a difference because everybody's going to be paying $250 as it is. Um, but I think maybe what we would do is we would vote on at least putting the 250 in there because I don't, I feel like that wasn't, even in the old regulation, it wasn't stipulated either, which is why we were having some issues. Like why did one, no. yeah, why did one thing say 500? Why did another thing say 250? So um putting it for now for 250 until we come up with a better solution to like cover everybody, I think equitably. Because it doesn't, you know, if it's somebody who's got a small business, you know, they might work throughout all of Pioneer Valley and they come to town once to do a cleanup or something like that. You know, maybe having that tier as opposed to, like I said, a larger company like Waste Management coming in and doing dumpster after dumpster after dumpster that definitely, it definitely seems like it would be a little, well, it would be in our favor also to have a slightly higher price point for those people. <laughs> but I think going forward, just solidifying the 250, solidifying the, the, the wording, and then kind of spending some time thinking about a, a new fee schedule for the next year would be a, a, good, a good way for us to go about doing that. That sounds good to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Any questions? No. Are we all set on looking at the waste hauler regulation? So Tammy, same thing. I guess we'll see another draft and we'll yeah. do the public notice. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, and we're thinking about using the application that more aligns with the state's uh, sample application than the one that we have currently. And I've we've seen copies of those. Too many. Perfect. All right, so I guess we're moving on to tr more trash, uh, trash and recycling program update. And recycling. I know, so we're in like week three of um, our uh, organics waste composting program over at Meadowbrook. I think the hill that we're finding that's not easy is trying to find a long-term solution for having somebody to help the younger grades at the school the kindergartners, first graders still have 
issues with figuring out how to sort everything. Um, we have a stipend, but that doesn't mean we can, you can't hire somebody with a stipend. You can use it to supplement somebody who's already an employee. So that's been trying to figure that one out. Hasn't been coming easy. I think today was the first day we actually were able to get a swap employee over there. Um, but the swap employees, they're only temporary until when they, when they have, um, when they've filled up their hours, they're done volunteering. So it, that could be done in like two weeks, but it looks like it, at, at least at Meadowbrook, it's probably going to have to be somebody there all year. So we've been talking with, you know, administration and talking with the food service program and seeing if maybe we can find a paraprofessional at the school and give them a stipend so that they would add that on to their other duties. So I have a question. Do we have like color coded and pictures and stuff like that? Yeah, but it's still not easy for the little ones, even three weeks in. Could they do like something in each of the classrooms that's fun so they learn about it? Just thinking about, you know, they can tie it to like science or education about the environment. Um, I have a first grader and I know Christine, you're second grader, right? So I'm just thinking about like my kid literally goes around town and goes literary when he sees someone throw something on the ground. Mm -hmm. So like. I think like getting them engaged about the environment is something that we do obviously like on Earth Day and other things, but could we not have this be part of a curriculum so it's a small ask for the teacher? Um, that that's a that's a I mean it's it's easier I think said than done. We're finding out out of for a lot of aspects of the program, you know, even just getting a volunteer in was really hard because they have to get even the even though they're their background checked and everything like that through town hall, through the COA, then they have to go to central office and also get extra background checks. No, I just meant um, like, but already no, I'm just, the, the, I'm just uh, highlighting some of the issues that we're getting so far. Um, they don't, at this point, they're not sort of willing to offer to change the way they do things to keep the program going. So if we're not there, things, the regular trash bins will come back out. Don't we have to do this? The health department does not have to do this. No, no, but I mean like <laughs> yeah. Meadowbrook has to do this in order to meet the reduction of the waste regulation yeah. or else we're gonna get a fine. Yes. So I feel like that's our stick and carrot, you know, like yeah. take five minutes before every lunch to be like, hey guys, don't forget your colors. It's still there. There are some very there. There are some younger kids that take to it well. There are others. It's it. It is very confusing. They can't read. Um, That's what I was saying. If it's, it's color coded, there's a lot going on. It is. There's a lot going on for the children. So having having somebody say you know okay you're dumping your milk here actually the milk is kind of the easiest part. Dumping. Yeah, it's it's hard because their lunch is different every single day they just consistently have a pizza, I think on Mondays. So yeah. there's a different container, like, or a different item every lunch. And it just changes kind of the flow of everything. So Liz is working on some solutions. Like one thing that gums up the whole lunch is also like two seconds long. The kids get their lunch. And then before you know it, they're coming up to dump their, their trash and their recycling and everything. So it's confusing. And then Stuff takes a little bit of time. So Liz is trying to get um, like a dispenser for utensils because all utensils come in these plastic wraps with a straw and everything. And the kids are trying to take out their, their silverware and the plastic and the napkin. And it's, it'll just take yeah. time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a process that needs to not just be there at the cafeteria when it's happening, but the planning for what they're purchasing like Alex said, the way the meals are served. Uh, yeah. th there's the trays have compartments for food, but because they do a lot of stuff ahead of time and they bring things in from another school, they're already like in recycling, recyclable containers. But that still means that, that and they're usually they dump out the or fruit. The kids are going to have to dump them out because they don't need them. <laughs> and then they're going to have you know, figure out which one it is. It is something that I think the younger grades are going to need is they're going to need adult supervision. We're not looking 
for somebody to throw out their trash for them because that wouldn't teach them anything, but having adult supervision like at the waste disposal area for the smaller grades, definitely. Could we send a flyer home to the parents? Cause then that way, like we could practice at home too, like get some parental involvement. I think that's like, we have a responsibility for, I mean, I am one of the parents for a yeah. child at Meadowbrook. And if I could be like, you know, Hey, mm -hmm. don't forget at school today, watch where you put your stuff. And we could practice like talking about like what goes where, I mean, I don't, not every parent does that or doesn't have time to do that, but it might just be, again, if we think about how like people learn, like how, how do people learn, right? It's not just one person telling them to do something. It's practicing, it's multiple avenues. It's people, especially like young children. You know, if we can think about like the true theory of education and practicing life-changing behaviors, it's not just gonna be figuring out someone to put by the, gar the garbage. So how can we make it easier? And obviously sending maybe a flyer home, like, hey, we changed how we're doing our throwing away. Can you talk about this with your kid? Um, I had attended um, a seminar for ditching disposables a couple weeks ago, and the, basically the two things that made programs successful were being able to have stipends for somebody to oversee them and having less disposable, um, less disposable product. Because even if by, say, Christmas, the younger grades are finally all set with it, next year we start all over again. It's every every year um so but i think what we need is to have the conversation of like how we make it more part of the school's culture it's that we're doing as a health department but as something that they're doing and i mean it was nice to see like some of the teachers and the paraprofessionals go up with the kids before that they before they had their food and look at what you know look at the containers and look at which way it was going but there's you know they're still very young i think at, at the younger ages it just it is a it is a tricky sort of thing, and there are um, there are programs uh, through like the program called the Green Team that I think we had one at one time at the high school, but it's sort of gone on the wayside. So, but that'll be something that I think we'll start addressing once we move from from one school to the next school because we're still only at one school right now doing this as it goes. We right talked to Lodi or Lodi. Say that again. Did we talk to the principal? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. As an educator, I'm having like major like this should be a bigger investment by the school too, especially because they're going to get a fine. Yeah. Yeah, we would we would love that to happen. But it's progress, and it's really hard. And I think that just listening to what other communities have done throughout the country. Um, these exact same challenges across the board, really. It's making it making it part of the culture, and that's sort of a hard buy-in. But I think once once more and more people see it, and more in the teachers, administration, um, they'll see how it can. There are easier ways to do things so that it it just flows more organically. Like right now, because we're coming off of the tail end of uh, basically doing everything like it's still in the pandemic where we're throwing everything out and everything's disposable. I think if we kind of go back to five years ago when we, you know, we had utensils and things like that, but in that meantime, the staff um, in, the, in the cafeterias has gone down significantly. So mm -hmm. that's another challenge. And I know they're having a hard time on that end filling positions. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different things that kind of lead to why it's hard. It's it's hard. It's a hard start, but I'm so glad that they decide they want to do it. And I'm sure it'll be hard too, even in like the high school, right? Because they're still getting their food in disposable containers, right? In a lot of ways. And I think that that would be the, that would probably be like working with purchasing and the food service staff to figure out ways to like get food in not disposable containers is gonna be the first, the biggest thing to change your amount of food or, or yeah. not the amount of food waste, but the amount of waste waste. Very much we, so. We see a ton of it in the high school because we get breakfasts sent up, two huge bags, a cold and a hot. Um, and you can't imagine how much is wasted. 
and thrown out with 1400 students. Um, and it goes up to academic and shop. So it is, it's, I can imagine it's a challenge. It was you know, so amazing. Success. We have one success. He literally said to me, you take your straw out and you put it in a separate container, you dump your milk, you put the milk container in another one, you scrape your food in another and you put your other things in another one. So you have, well, we have one success and I didn't even talk to him about it. We have two, yes. Two. There's two. I think part of the reason we have two is like, it goes back to what Katie said is both she and I were like, how's lunch going? Are you like scraping your food? Cause we're probably the only two people who know about it at the like general parental level in that, I mean, Eleanor's a success too, right? Because she's like the kid who will tell you how to do everything. Um, but I think that that's the other piece is like, if you have no idea what's going on, it's really hard to say like, I do this and then I do this. And then also just making sure, right? And I know this is not a school decision. This is a food service, but like if there are things and I know it's fruit and vegetables, they're always thrown away. And I know those that get into regulations of what has to be served. Yeah. But like, if there are certain things that are always thrown away and other things that aren't always thrown away, even in those categories, making it, you know, I get that there's a lot of laws around that and that's really hard, but yeah. But I think the more, it, you know, I, anybody who's had to do it themselves, the more you show them a food, the more likely they are to become acclimated to it. And, you know, a, a lot of peas and a lot of, Cling peaches will be thrown out in the meantime <laughs> while that happens. Um, but it was, it's really neat to see how lit, like once they start separating, how little uh, actual goes in the trash, the solid waste. That's, I, it just, it's like, oh, this is half of, half of a, a container, half of a garbage can. Like that, that's really cool to see that that's all that's going in there. So, and you know, and some of the other things go beyond the kitchen that we're trying to solve with the schools. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people who don't, staff who don't know proper, I, there's lots of things I've learned in the last couple of weeks of what's recyclable, what's not recyclable, what's considered, you know, a container, what's not a container. So I, what we're going to try to do is do something with the, um, with the staff and I was talking to the superintendent and he thinks it's a good idea. And in the meantime, we're gonna be putting together, Liz is putting together a handout to help with that. There's there's definitely, especially with the new contain with the new um, containers and things like that we have at all the schools, there's some there's some confusion. So we're just trying to get our max recycling <laughs> that we can possibly get because we're, you know if people are putting things that can be recycled into the dumpster, we're paying for that. We're, you know, whereas if it, if it went to the recycling facility, we could actually get money back instead of it being put into a dumpster. Um, it just, you know, it's, it's tough because I feel like we, we think we all know how to recycle, but I, I don't, grownups, we, we don't know. Well, and I think too, like, um, there's actually books about it for kids. Like Fly Guy has a great book about recycling and all that. As well, take one second. Um, I can't say you put it. Put, okay, sorry. Can you, can you go check? <laughs> no, I can't, honey. One second. Um, but I do think it would be. You can see right here. I would think it'd be great to teach the kids about the recycling throughout the year, so it actually kind of perpetuates and goes out further. Um, just so like you said, you have that institutional memory, so you don't have to do as much every year and it kind of perpetuates down as well too. And that's kind of why we wanted to start with Meadowbrook because nobody in that school's experienced a uh, cafeteria eating. So this was like a kind of a good place to, to grow them into uh, continuing to separate their food as they go along. So, but we will keep everybody posted on how things are going and you know, always feel free if like uh, this little thing pops in your head. And you're like, what about this? Send it, send it my way, which is, you know, every, every little bit, every little bit um, helps. And there's no suggestion too tiny. Um, so that's going, that's going, I mean, that's going well. I, I think that as we keep going, um, I can't, you know, I'm interested to see how it's going to look or how it's going to fit in in the other schools as well. Uh, let's see, overflow bags. I think that we're gonna see them on uh, October 3rd, they'll, they'll be back in the green bags. 
Um, that's uh, what they're anticipating. So after that happens, we'll be anticipating the increase from $1.75 to $2 a bag. Um, we had another fix it clinic um, on September 9th, and that was um, well received. And there's another one scheduled for December 2nd. I think I had mentioned the last meeting, there's going to be a Hard Springs truck next month on October 29th in the um, town hall parking lot. I'm sure there's more updates in trash recycling that I didn't write down, but very busy. Quick um, question. How long will they be accepting the blue bags? Like if people bought they them. They run out. Yeah, until 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 you until they run out. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure, was, right, that everyone knows that they can keep using them if they already bought them. Oh, absolutely. You've already paid for them. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but they're sort of phasing out how many they're sending to the distributors so that there's not a lot of back stock so that when the green bags do arrive, you get a green bag. Um, COVID. I don't know if you guys knew this, but it's still here. <laughs> and it's been very steady. I mean, obviously with the accessibility of the of rapid antigen tests, home tests, um, we don't get a very good um, swath of what it looks like, but our numbers for those who have been, you know, getting tests done at a provider um, have stayed very consistent all summer. We've hovered around uh, like, so this, so for the last reporting period, which was August 28th through uh, September 10th, we were at 9.98% positivity with 43 people um, testing positive through uh, you know, lab provided tests. The difference though, this month into September, as opposed to last month is, I think we are starting to see more pediatric cases than we were in the summertime. Like our, the average age kind of went down from uh, 52 last month to about 42. And we saw about 12 kids come in the last two weeks. So, and those are, you know, kids who went to a testing center. Um, we're still seeing the exact same numbers in the senior category that hasn't, that's doesn't seem to be changing. Um, and we've sort of, we're, we've kind of flatlined at 74% fully vaccinated, 44% boosted, um, first booster, 10% second booster. We're looking, um, we're just looking to set up more clinics for the fall with, especially with the Omicron specific boosters that we're having. It's just I, the, Finding those, like scheduling the place and scheduling the vaccinators has been going on for like three weeks <laughs> for different locations. So hopefully by the end of this week, I'll have solidified some clinics. We'd like to do those sort of joint COVID and COVID boosters slash flu clinics, like with the school department and maybe do another one or two with the senior center, which would be great. Um, so uh, earlier this month, the state DPH, Department of Public Health, sent an email to all the health departments asking if they would like free test kits. And um, they sent you a survey, and I clicked yes, and they said we will be sending your town its specific allotment of test kits. So uh, on Monday at 3.45, the driver showed up, and we had, he had 46 boxes of test kits um, uh, big boxes. So that came out to enough test kits for half the towns, over 8,000 tests in there, <laughs> which has been great. Uh, you know, we've been working with different- Where apartments. are you storing them? All over. <laughs> we were thinking about making some thrones for people in the office to sit on. No, they're just, there's a lot. We we have been able to get some people uh, to take some off our hands, which is good. Um, where do okay. people come to, do they just come to town hall to pick them up? Yeah, so uh, a couple different departments are keeping boxes with little signs, you know, at telling people to take some box, take some with them. Uh, library, um, clerk's office, our office, so that they have, you know, you come in, take a test. Perfect. So it's great that we have them too, because we're, we aren't getting super low, but I think with people questioning, even just within you know, town hall, how do I take a test? When should I take a test? So it's, it's nice that we have them. 
just that we have <laughs> a lot of them. Um, but that's great. Are the schools supplied with what they need? I mean, is that another avenue, right? I mean, they were sending them home left and right last year. I don't know if that's I another avenue they... to reach out to if they need them or. I did actually. Yeah, I did actually bring boxes to the school department yesterday. So they they've they requested some boxes, but they um, really I think it's more for employees than students. They're not sending them home the way they used to be sending them home. Um, so anybody needs them, we have plenty over at Town Hall. Come to the health department, 60 Center Square. <laughs> um, we have our flu clinics scheduled. Uh, there's one will be on October 4th from 8 to 1 in the senior center parking lot at 328 North Main Street. And then the other one will be the next day, October 5th, from 1 to 6 in the evening in the fire department's parking lot, which I believe is 150 Summers Road. It's the one with all the big red 160. 160? No, that's the police department. It is 150, you're right? Okay. I feel like I've written it on a lot. <laughs> um, so that yeah, we'll have those two days for flu shots. Um, let's see what else. This Friday, we will be staffing a first aid booth at the Little E in the parking lot at the uh, Senior Center. They're having an event um, for seniors and families of seniors to um, kind of experience the Big E without having to go especially people who are a little immune compromised, a little are older and really can't go through. I think it's a really nice idea. Um, and also we have been uh, preparing for next week. Uh, so, so this is preparedness month this September. So next week we're gonna be doing a preparedness event at the senior center. I'm just kind of talking about personal preparedness, putting together a plan, putting together um, uh, go kits and our IT department will be there to help people get signed up on code red because it's simple for those of us who have emails and know how to navigate a website but not everybody can do that and what we've noticed especially during the summer when we were having issues with uh, trash a lot of people aren't getting those messages so I think the more people we have on there the better um, and it, we've also been working as a county uh, with the other medical reserve corps uh, to get a grant for training and consistent training for our volunteers in Hamden County. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we get that. And we'll have more options for trainings for people, um, for volunteers and for people maybe interested in emergency preparedness uh, come uh, 2023. Um, all right. Did I miss anything, Alex or Renee? What a it feels like it's just been so busy, like every day, like 3.30 comes around. It's like, what happened? <laughs> you know, but fall is, I, I think fall and then um, the turn of the year is like a real busy time in health departments. There's always lots of activities going on. Then permitting starts again. Yay, permitting. <laughs> so yeah, because right now tobacco permits are due and the hauling will be due and then come uh, winter time, then we'll start working on permits for food service. So, and this never ending. So that is, that is my report. Well, thank you for all the work you do. That's a lot on all the permits. And then, you know, having new decorations of boxes of COVID tests. In the office, so we've realized that those I heart, uh, I help, is it I help? kits they're orange and they make great um you know fall decor <laughs> you put them in baskets with a take one sign which is very nice <laughs> oh renee has also been uh on a quest to make sure everything oh every one of those has a sticker on it to let you know about the new expiration date um which you know if you do have a box and you realize that it's expired it's not expired more than likely and you can go on this um uh, you can go on, I think their state has a link and then there's a link on the federal websites just to show you what the new expiration is. But on the boxes that we're um, handing out, there's a QR code that can tell you when it's expired. Typically it's about six or seven months past whatever date is on the box. Um, 
but I think if you have an expired one and you see a line, maybe look for um, some more testing. Uh, but also Renee, she's been digitizing all of our files to make it easier and to sort of streamline our office so that we're not sitting there looking through cabinets all the time. You've been you've been diligently at that at that scanner <laughs> left and right. Scanner and I are friends now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, it's, you know, it's been great. It's been busy. Stop on by and visit. Katie, Rebecca, anything else you want to chat about tonight? You Good, you guys sound super organized there. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Is the public health nurse job still posted? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you. As always. <laughs> Thank you. All right. If no one has anything else, we should look at an October meeting date while we're all here. I'm gone for 10 days in October. Ooh. And my sister's turning 40 and then I have a conference. Um, so I'm gone the 14th through the 23rd. Okay. And so I am gone is not as exciting. I am gone the 26th, 27th and 28th. So should we look then the 12th? Is that too soon? Or that's like next week. No, that's three <laughs> weeks away. Yeah, so the 28th, the 5th, and the 12th, that would be three weeks. Or do you want to do like the 25th? And I can't do the 25th, I like. What about the 1st? Like November? October's, or yeah, it's a. What time it is? So I can't do Wednesday nights, the 5th. 12th or 19th I have a work commitment it's just a short-term training but it's going to take me out those three Wednesday nights but and I can make other nights when is your teaching classes now so I'm on Tuesdays I do happen to have though October the 11th she's not having a class on that particular evening um because it's some sort of holiday there at Westfield State. So I would be available. I can do the 11th. At I six? don't know. Is six work for folks on the 11th? Um, do you want to bookmark the 11th? Um, in the case that we do actually have information up from the state about tobacco. Oh, that's right. Maybe we should wait till. Mm -hmm. when is we, the I was going to say, but if we don't know. Oh, yeah. Maybe. But if we Wait. if if we don't like a tentative find type out, of thing, we can keep it there. Um, if we find out that week, say before the sixth, mm -hmm. that they yeah. do in fact they did in fact change it. That way, we could have a meeting on the eleventh. We could say, okay, we're going to go forward with this, and then we can put in the um, we can uh, uh, publicize it. The public so hearing like, not then we're going to be like the first week of november it looks like based off of our schedules which i think would be do we have to have one one every month based off of the regulations though no so we could theoretically push it to november 2nd because mm -hmm. wednesday seems to be better for you everyone else's schedules mm -hmm. too right why don't we just do november 2nd then because if we don't have um, to have one in october just push it off yeah yeah, because especially because I feel like it would be better for all of us to be as educated about what the state's doing, because then we can make those changes. You know, you can send it around via email. We send you comments if there's anything else we need to adjust. And then we have that comment for public hearing. Sounds like a plan. So November 2nd, then? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So nothing on the 11th. Because I would, I would hate for you all to have to like run around like crazy people if they give the announcement on the 6th, then you're like fiercely editing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. That sounds like a good plan. And then we'll meet on the 2nd. 
and then we need we, we need to post 14 days for public i don't know if you guys are going to need to fill me in exactly on what those rules say but that's fine yeah we'll also post it in the newspaper for 14 days prior to the meeting so we'll take care of all that and then obviously I'll, there there's like a packet that we can send to you christine on like how the meeting is organized and everything and what needs to be said and done and we'll invite all of the tobacco retailers to come as well okay perfect all right I yeah, make we can, we'll just we'll figure it out because it'll get real busy after november 2nd i think in everyone's schedules Sorry, I'm being told I need to motion to end the meeting. Oh. My six year old is telling me it's after seven. <laughs> well, uh, we'll we'll plan to meet on the second um, and let us know if there's a draft you can send around before that, that you know we can see, we'll happily do that. And then, um, so Katie, can I have a motion to end the meeting? A motion to end the meeting. I right. second that. Great. Uh, so Christine Johnston, aye. Katie Jobbins, aye. Rebecca Torsha. Bye. All right. Thanks, everyone. All Have right. Great. Have a good one. See you in Bye. November. Bye. Bye.